Did you ever wonder why only one country in the world, Israel, is considered by many in the international community to be illegitimate? By illegitimate, I mean that it literally has no legal right to exist. Here's Richard Falk, Princeton University Professor of International Law and former United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in the Palestinian Territories, describing and presumably justifying the movement to delegitimize Israel. The essence of this legitimacy war is to cast doubt on Israel's status as a moral and law-abiding actor, to deny it rights as a member of international society. It is up to all of us dedicated to peace and justice to do all we can to help the Palestinians prevail in the legitimacy war and to bring their long ordeal to an end. Think about this for a moment. Nobody questions whether Zimbabwe has a right to exist, or Suriname, or Pakistan, a country whose founding in 1948, the same year modern Israel was founded, created about 12 million refugees and brought about the deaths of nearly one million people, nearly all civilians. Why then is Israel singled out? Is it really because of the interminable Israeli-Palestinian conflict and Israel's continued occupation of land that it conquered in self-defense in 1967 when its Arab neighbors tried to annihilate it? If occupation were the reason, why the attempted annihilation of Israel before there was any occupation? And if occupation were the reason, why did Israel's isolation increase after Israel offered to give virtually all of that land to the Palestinians in 2000 and after Israel withdrew completely from the Gaza Strip in 2005. And besides, there are interminable conflicts all over the globe, and much bloodier ones too. No, the reason for the world's antagonism to Israel goes much deeper than that. Many in the international community, especially Europe, are actually opposed to the idea of a Jewish state. Why? The answers are complex, but I want to isolate one that is very important and almost always ignored. After two world wars in Europe, Europe's leaders and intellectual elite decided that the nation state was a terrible idea. Look at the carnage it had created, they argued. A much better idea would be to erase borders, unified currency, and downplay national identities. The plan was to transcend the nation state, replace it with something better. This would be a pan-European entity, what is now known as the European Union. Ironically, at that very same time, the Jews drew precisely the opposite conclusion. Now, the Jews said, having suffered centuries of persecution and the murder of six million of us in this century, what we need more than ever is a state of our own, for our culture, for our traditions, for our safety, a place of our own where we are responsible for our own future. Even before Israel declared its independence in May 1948, the collision between Israel and Europe was therefore inevitable. Europe wanted to move away from the nation state. The Jews wanted to move toward it. The Jews' desire for a state of their own, which we know by the term Zionism, Zion being a biblical name for Israel, is hardly surprising. It's been a part of Jewish prayer and ritual ever since the Jews were expelled from their homeland, first by the Babylonians in 586 BC, and finally by the Romans in the year 135. Indeed, for 2,000 years, the Jewish Passover meal has ended with the phrase, next year in Jerusalem. But in remaking their own state, the Jewish people aroused jealousy and anger in both Europe and the Arab world. Nothing is more difficult for human beings than the experience of watching others acquire what we are in the process of losing. Europe's elites knew that unifying all of Europe would come at a heavy cost of culture, language, tradition, the things that made them who they are. But they forged ahead anyway, anything to prevent another war, they reasoned, all while watching the Jewish people recover its borders, its language, and its heritage. Meanwhile, the Arab world, forced to face the fact that it had never invested in the institutions of a liberal democracy, a free press, the right of association, women's rights, and the like, turned its frustration on the Jewish state because the Jewish state was doing what they couldn't do. What do the European and Arab worlds have in common? Instead of acknowledging what Israel has accomplished, they increasingly repudiate it. The Arab and much of the Muslim world seek to destroy Israel, while too much of Europe enables that goal by delegitimizing the idea upon which Israel is built, the making of a distinctive Jewish nation called Israel. I'm Daniel Gordas of the Shalem Center, 
for Prager University.